All right, Cigar Noise, we're here with Nick from Foundation Cigar Company. Nick, can you tell us a little bit about what you've got coming out? Sure, happy to be here at Cigar Noise um, Foundation. We came out with Wednesday last year as our debut launch. This year we have some exciting, new exciting projects, the Tabernacle. It's a Connecticut broadleaf blend, been aging this uh, broadleaf for a couple years with Abdel Fernandez. It's a uh, San Andreas Negro binder, fillers from Esteli, Jalapa, and Hamastron. Very rich, earthy, cocoa, nice toasted espresso notes. Um, I'm really happy about this cigar. And uh, the Tabernacle is, you know, the, uh, is a movable um, tent of something sacred. So I, I treat these ones as uh, sacred, the Tabernacle. Also I have the Charter Oak. The Charter Oak is my uh, tribute to Connecticut. And uh, you know, at the turn of the century, there was a lot of uh, cigar factories in New Haven, Connecticut. My grandfather smoked a lot of these brands, so I wanted to make something in tribute to him and also the state of Connecticut. Uh, the Charter Oak was a famous tree in Hartford where uh, this certain charter was hidden from the British from keeping the king from basically taking away all their rights. So it's really the image of Connecticut. Um, it blends five sizes, two different wrappers, a little bit different blends. We have a Connecticut shade wrapper and a broadleaf, excuse me, broadleaf wrapper. Great MSRP is between <laughs> four and six. John, you, you can come by. I don't think the what cigar knows. We're going to have a little buy. limbo here. Um, <laughs> Great price range, four to six dollars. Two great smokes if you like Connecticut shade. Got some body strength, nothing overpowering, no bitterness, nice balance. The broadleaf is a little bit more hearty, a little bit sweeter. Um, we also have something called the Upsetters. A couple years ago, I went to Jamaica for Bob Marley's 70th birthday. I'm a big fan of the reggae culture. Um, if some people know and don't know, Jamaica has an old history of growing tobacco, especially a particular tobacco called cow tongue. This is indigenous to the island. Uh, it's known as cow tongue, tongue or silver tongue. Um, the cigar industry kind of left Jamaica in the late 1990s. Um, it was been my dream to work with Jamaican Tobacco for a long time, being a big fan of uh, reggae, rock steady music, dub music, ska music. So um, you see here the imagery is based on all old albums from the late 60s, early 70s of reggae albums. Jamaica was really obsessed with spaghetti westerns at that time, you know, um, so hence, hence the imagery. Also a big fan of an old cult movie from Jamaica called The Harder They Come. This a uh, lot of great sizes, eight different sizes. It is an infused cigar, um, so we really worked with some Caribbean style herbs. It's interesting to note that Jamaica, when they're curing um, cigars in the, I'm sorry, cigars, the tobacco in the curing barns, yeah. how they do Kentucky fire cured tobacco, yeah. they put hardwoods on the fires. Actually in Jamaica, they do the same process, but not with hardwoods, but with different herbs. Okay. Not that herb everybody's thinking of, <laughs> but different herbs from the island. It's actually an old Arawak uh, tradition from way back. So excited about that brand. And the Wense, the wise man, we have, um, couple interesting line extensions. Um, we have a Lanceros, a 7.5 by 40. This is a 13 count box. There's 250 boxes of these right now. Um, this is my grandfather's favorite size. How to make something up really nice. The artwork, we originally did, uh, our art director, Thief Operandi, who did these beautiful canvases behind us in Esteli, Nicaragua. Big up to my man, Thief. Uh, he painted this originally. We've been trying to work on how we're going to, ma not mass produce it, but produce at least 200 boxes. He couldn't paint 200 boxes. He's got a lot of other great things happening. So silk screen came out kind of terrible. We then went laser printer. The box came out like it's hand painted. It's really clean. Great Lancero, cedar spice, everything nice. We also have a short Lancero we're doing with the guys over at BOTL for Operation Esteli, helping to fund a school in Esteli. It's a five and a half by 40, 20 count box. There's 200 boxes of these. So um, a lot of interesting things going on. That's fantastic. Uh oh. So uh -oh. Now, here's the fun question. All right, fun questions. You might get me stuttering. <laughs> What's something that you were hoping somebody would ask you throughout the course of this convention, now that we're in the last half hour of it? Um, let's see. You know, it's interesting. I haven't gotten a lot of questions about the FDA. 
Oh, really? Yeah, which has been great. And, um, <laughs> you don't want to talk FDA? No, I can talk FDA, <laughs> but it's, it, you know, from being one of the shows with all these dates happening, it's yeah. interesting to see, you know, it's been great because the show's been a complete success, but, yeah. you know, not to bring up something down, but we're moving forward through the FDA. So, Are you worried about the FDA? I'm not worried. It's a concern as far from a business standpoint that you have... We're 0.009 of a percent of the whole tobacco category. Yeah. So of any tobacco products, 0.009%, it's such a small per percentage. Um, I'm worried about lack of clarity because you have this date set of August 8th, but then you have a two year period to comply, but they're not, they haven't released exactly what the compliance. Right. So, um, you know. So we'll find out. We'll find out, time will tell. And uh, until that time, Foundation is here. So we've been working on a lot of brands, these brands, uh, for the past couple of years. So we hope the market uh, receives them well. Fantastic. So, well, thanks for taking the time with thanks us. Thanks to you. Thanks to all your listeners. Represent Foundation of Creation. <laughs>